What's up? It's Alex Goubet here with another episode of the Startup Secret Show. And today I'm very lucky to be joined by the, the dream expert himself, Ricardo Koch. Ricardo, how are you today? I'm, I'm doing fine, Alex. Uh, good to uh, be here on the show. Thank you for this uh, honor. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to talk with you and uh, the audience to listen to us. So uh, yeah. And we're so lucky to have that global poll because, Ricardo, uh, you're calling from the uh, Netherlands right now. Is that correct? Yes, I'm calling all the way from the Netherlands, that tiny country that's known for its cheese and its its, its, uh, windmills and the cows. (laughs) (laughs) And now you, okay? And now me, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Well, today is going to be a real treat because spoken to a lot of different types of people the last few months. And Ricardo's one I chose in particular because of his unique uh, offering in the spiritual and the psychological realm. Before we get there, I always start off with the first experience of the entrepreneur, the hero's journey. And when I asked Ricardo, he gave me a really unique answer. He's going to break it down. But his goes back when he was 13. And it wasn't necessarily about monetizing a product, but his starts out with creative ideas and the outreach, which bear those fruits down the line of income, relationships, et cetera. Mm. But take me back to Ricardo, 13 years old in the computer lab at school. Um, what was that scene like? What was that scene? Um, <laughs> uh, let's break it down. I, I, I'm, I have a lot of ideas and I, I analyze everything. And I saw a lot of problems in, in Holland, in Europe, in the world. And maybe a little bit pride, or maybe youth, but I was thinking, but it's so simple to solve this. Come on, guys, what's this? So I started just to 13 in that computer room on school to mail to politic, politics, to, to business leaders, broadcasting companies. And I, I didn't have a company that time, of course. I was 13, come on. But just saying that I had a company, I want to meet them and I want to discuss with them how we can work together. Uh, and some they react and some they don't. And some are still connections. But, but there it started because I saw some problems. And even now, I, I do the same in my head. I see some problems and I'm thinking, come on, it's not so, it's not so hard. Just analyze the root, see the root. Because the problem is so simple. And that's where my journey of, of being an entrepreneur started and that I discovered that I want to work. It's, I'm, I don't have a problem to work for someone, but most people, they just want to work for the money. And I have a higher cost than just the money. Money, it's good and I love it and, and it helps, but that's not, it's a result of what I'm doing. And that's where it started. Man, that's really an amazing start there because from the beginning, you know, things push you in life. Sometimes people will get associated with the job because they've already foregone their passion. So let me at least get money, you know, Dude. but because you started early, there's a lot of factors in your favor. You started early, you chose a passion project. So at 17, four years down the line, which seems like a long time, but you're still 17, you're young. That experience of the newspaper, what, what was that about there? Yeah, I was 17, and um, uh, originally I'm a hockey player, uh, field hockey. Uh, but uh, I saw some uh, football clubs, but uh, we created football clubs in, in the town where we were raised, raised. And they did football in a, in a way that I thought, yeah, but it's just making these kids trying to be the best football player and all the others get a low self-esteem. So I thought, I want to do this differently. And I can do that. So I had a name, I never forget, Sparta United. And I just, I make the plans. I contacted to, to, for a field and kind of stuff. And, 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 and I contacted the newspaper of the region. Uh, and they make a, make a, put it in newspaper and they make a headline and it's still on Google. You can find it, but it's in Dutch. Um, is it a fairy tale or is this real? Because uh, uh, this 17 year old want to start a, 
they make it a little bit fun at it because they thought, yeah, it is impossible because in Holland, the culture is uh, be normal and don't be crazy and, and a little bit don't don't go too high. That's a little bit part of the culture. But the other other thing happened uh, to me. It, it gives me more power. But it was, in the end, not uh, a positive. It was a positive thing in a negative jacket. Yeah, man, that's really good because you know, what you're explaining there is a unique story. It sounds so, it, it doesn't, this story sounds like it should be interesting because it's like how easily you explained it. But if you really listen to what you're saying, it's very interesting because think about mm-hmm. it. You started out by noticing a problem, even if it was emotional. Like, why are you hurting these people's like feelings? Like, like everyone's a loser if they don't do this, yeah. which life is partially competitive in some senses, but you can reimagine that, that creative thinking you brought to it, right? To this entrepreneurship endeavor. So business doesn't have to be emotionless, right? You can bring True. a passion, a greater cause. Yeah. Yes. True. And, and even though they made fun of you, you know what they did? They really made fun of themselves because when you put someone else down, you have the question, you say, what is like free people want people to be free, locked up, sad people want people to be sad. And so that experience, although, like you said, positive in a negative or negative, positive in a negative jacket or something like along yeah. those lines. Yeah, that's what I said. It gave you skills. And so what, how did you take those skills and those experiences into your next endeavor? Um. No, it it started there, but it started earlier on also. Oh, when, yeah. Um, I I I had a great youth and and uh, the best mother you can have, uh, a standalone mother. My my parents divorced when I was seven, but I was that kid that doesn't belong to the groups, and uh, most of the t- sometimes direct rejection, and sometimes the rejection in a way that. People say you are part of us, but you don't. So, so that's a little bit of my background. And because of that, um, I had one weakness. I had a, a deep desire, maybe a addiction. I called it addiction that time, to be approved, to be that people like me. And uh, it, it, in the same way, I had the desire, but that was a, a thing that, that, to be honest, uh, to step into a successful entrepreneurship or you want to accomplish your dream if you don't want to entrepreneur in another way it, it could be also uh, uh, it blocked me because um, you want to that people approve what you're doing but when you have a passion or a cause or going to be an entrepreneur you're going not downstream you're going upstream uh, against the stream and because of Doing that, uh, uh, it means that in the beginning, a lot of people don't approve what you're doing. Because if you want all the approval, that fish swim with stream. So I have to learn. Come on, man. (laughs) You're saying this so easy, but listen, dead fish swim with the stream. Yeah, that's true. Wow. And I had to learn through all this rejection, through all these times, to build a character that's not depending on, on what people think. It's not depending on what I'm, uh, um, what result I have in the things I do. Just not on what I'm doing, but just on who I am is good enough. And because that's good enough, I can do greater things. And that's something I learned to, to I, I, I've been on holes where I, I teach or preach or how do you want to call it, give a lecture. And there was just one person in the end. And it was a whole 500 people. What are you doing with, on that moment? Are you going away? I see a lot of people, they go away. I am stay there. I thought, okay, these people are coming. I teach the same way if it was full. And that's that's hard because on that moment you have pain <laughs> because that's not what you want. Let's be honest. But that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. 
And you need to learn Ooh. that it doesn't matter how many people like you, or how many people want to come to learn in the small to build a character because we don't want an entrepreneurship for one year. We want it, I guess, for a lifetime, maybe not even for a lifetime, for more generations that your children and their children still your company is there, still the thing that you strive, that you fight for is there. But that takes time to build. It's easy to go to the top, but it's very hard to stay there. And you need character to to stay there. How many singers reach the top? They but they couldn't their character couldn't handle that that famous Britney Spears we added. And let's be honest, they're coming additional kind of stuff and they fall off. And and that's something I had to learn. And and it's from the moment that I had the dreams. Because the company that started two years ago, we come on later, I think. But uh, I had to do it from the 13 years old. I was, now I'm 32. It was 22. It's not 20, 20. I was 30 when it started, when it really started. That doesn't mean I didn't do anything. But it took 17 years from the moment from the dream to the moment that I stepped into the dream. That I stepped into that company. If I stepped into earlier, every time it failed because my character wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. If the things that we do right now, if I did it, the the team that I I may lead from 15 people, I did it five years ago, I collapse. I know know for sure because I was still depending on what people say. Uh, uh, If people say strange things on social media, I, I was depressed, all kind of stuff. I'm going over that. I'm, 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 and, and it takes time because we know it here, but it needs to sink to, to, to your emotions, to your heart, to every cell in your body. Man, this is really good, man. Let me tell you, like, uh, again, you listen to it and you're telling us like crazy transformational things. Um, but like it is emotional, but it's like, it might be your accent to where it's like, I'm hearing it and I'm just like, this is crazy how good this is. And I'm just like sitting there thinking like, I'm not reacting crazily. This is just so useful. You know, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know how to react. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> dude, let me, let me tell you. I said, dude, excuse me. I put that down. Dead fish swim with the stream. That's not what you want, but it happened, right? Just so yeah. many things like on that stage still going and you're fighting in your own experience because i think the united states is a little bit more for um entrepreneurship right i know but more than living the american dream stuff yeah so i'm going to get into your business here but just because and i mean my own ignorance and maybe my audience is curious about this too what are some of the cultural differences you might see in the western business world to where you're at in the business world uh, um now what i say a lot i speak spoke about it three weeks ago on a, on a meeting and there were some americans because they have uh american investors uh and dutch people and and what i say the the, the biggest difference to the netherlands and to america and i love america for that is in in Holland we have a kind of culture that uh, uh, they call Calvinistic to to hold you a little bit small. Don't 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 do it too big. Don't do that. Just just be a little bit small. And in America, there's more kind of that American dream. You can do it. There are some other problems in America. Uh, I've been there too. Uh, but that's one of the things that's good because to come there. I didn't have a lot of people, but the people that I had, they believed in me. And uh, even though they don't understand me always, but they believed in me. And, and people need people who believe in them. Uh, uh, sometimes even one moment in life, uh, uh, some, some mentor of me says, you know, a lot of times we, 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 we uh, talk about people uh, behind their back and all kind of stuff. But 
what would the world look like if in that one moment that you meet someone, and maybe you never seen them anymore, that in the words that you speak, it will change the life forever because you believe in that. Because words have power. We see it in a negative way with bullying. If you say a lot of times, you're ugly, people can't kind of believe it. And like the, what the people think, how the people think, that's the way he is. And the way he is, is the way he acts. And that's so, it's so important what you start to believe. That, that starts all of it. And, and, and even the people say, but I don't have the skill. Skills is not, a, is not a thing. It starts in your mind. It starts what you believe. If you believe you're a failure, if you believe you, I never get a partner, I never get a wife or a, or a husband, let's be honest. I say, okay, you don't get it. But Ricardo, that's, that's very hard. No, because you believe it. Because if you believe you are, and it's totally your belief, you believe not just with your mouth, you believe it from the inside, I know for sure. I don't say tomorrow. I know for sure it will happen because your acts will uh, uh, will prove your beliefs. And because of that, I believe, let's take the husband and the wife. I believe I get a wife. You go to, when you see a nice chick, a girl, you go to that girl and step on it because you believe I get a wife and she will be it. I believe it. And only because of that, it could be that that girl thinks, oh, maybe I need to go on a date with him. And you get the wife. Because of your belief. It's all starting here. That, that our mind is so strong, but can be also devastating. Yeah, I think the number one thing I've seen as like a tangible, and we're going to get into your tangible teachings here, is the time it takes from belief to action to create it to outcome. It's not immediate. Right. The moment you do exactly, you have to believe, you have to act. You have to, so some of those things become ingrained. It can be immediate, like you can believe this, do this, and get the outcome. Sure. But sometimes people who don't get things immediately will just they didn't really believe it in the gut anyway. That's why they didn't, that's why immediately didn't work. I give up. Ah. But when the reality is, and this is why coaching and your what you do is very important. Let's get to that now. What what have you seen? So we're going to come back to this because I, I know we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about what have you seen helping people keep people on the wagon. But mm. before we do get there, let's talk about some of the work you're doing now, um, mm. the people you're helping now. You started to get into it a little bit. What kinds of people, businesses, individuals do you help? Um, it's a, in, especially where I'm focusing on that's different from so, because sometimes always also other people come to me uh, is the young, the young people, the youth. I have a passion for youth. I love the youth because they know who they are. If they don't like you, they say it to you. I love Wow. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's so a good uh, line. that's another one. They know who, it's crazy how you get older and you don't even know who you are, but when you're young, you yeah, we, we get so uh, uh, um, um, going into our mind and, and we just think so difficult about the world and about ourselves that we, we lost the self and we, we live to the expectations of our, of our wives or our husbands or our children or at school or at work and at a certain moment we think who am I? It's, it's so easy. Go back to your childhood. That's one of the first advice I, I give a lot. But, uh, but mostly the 16 to 25 years old, uh, uh, that's our, our main target as an organization. And uh, we make uh, t- t- television programs. Uh, uh, we make podcasts and mo- mostly standalone podcasts. Uh, I write books uh, for them to, that they can discover their dream, uh, build a character. Uh, and live the dream in a fearless way, despite the circumstances in the life. Because we need to be also honest to our young people, because social media tells them and tells us maybe too, life is always great. And life is great to live, but that doesn't mean there won't be negative things. Mm. That's reality. 
when we go to heaven, I'm a Christian, I'm a, I study theology, uh, then there is no pain anymore. But right here, the reality is there is sickness. The reality is there is death. The reality is there are debts. There is poverty. And of course, we strive to, to, to take it away. But the reality is in, in Europe, we have the war between Ukraine and, and, and Russia. That's the reality. The reality is there is some man called Vladimir Putin who thinks I'm all everything and I can go there and kill people. That's not the world that the ideal world, but even in that kind of world, you can live fearless and you can live your dreams. And that's something that, that we learned them and we learned it, of course, to the direct inspiration, like I do right now a little bit, but also to entertainment, to to some programs like we we got a pro, uh, program called Wokeland, and it was a little bit of fictive program where uh, singles goes to uh, goes uh, on a on a dating for their uh, ideal woke partner, but it was a little bit with 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 humor and with 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 comedy, uh, and we try to let them think about it. We I don't want to give people this is what it is. Now, I want to help people go on a searching themselves and thinking by yourself. Don't follow the algorithms. Don't fo- follow what everyone says, what news says. I don't say that they're lying. That's not what I'm saying. But learn to think by yourself. Because if you start to think, the things you're, you're, you discover, that are the things you're going to believe in. Don't, don't follow everyone. Just even your mentors, even your close ones, always think by yourself. That's that's really being adult. That's not 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 all the things we lay on uh, to be an adult, and that's what I'm trying to do to all the things I make. Also, music uh, in in different ways, and and mostly sometimes also others come came to me and they asked me, "Can can you do training?" Uh, and in very unique cases, I do coaching individuals. Uh, I'm more kind of standing on stage. I can reach more people. But there are some special ones that I say, I know what it is, but I believe in you. I want to coach an individual. Uh, and if if I say that, then uh, you're a little bit uh, more special because of some reason. So... Uh, but a lot of people that want me to coach them, but <laughs> my time is a little bit limited. Yeah, and I so I so see that, and so I, I'm gonna we're gonna come I'm gonna touch it now, and oh, I have another question there for you, right? You do have a unique ability to transmit energy because even if it's a one to one. I could feel like this way you smile and like you're emote when you talk. It definitely has a room's energy to where like if people were in the I could see how an audience would benefit whereas like if it's one-on-one personality types may clash depending on if someone's like reserved obviously as me as a person we get along great so the guy like, i'm aware of that right yeah and no I, that's not even the, the thing or why i don't do it but uh, yeah. ask your question then i can came on on it yeah not, not to cut you down there that might have been like a, a poor like um observation but you know my real like you know flowing thoughts here now in that Right, you talk about trends and problems that you see in these that specific sex, say 16 to 25. I did want to ask you, like, what are some of the typical problems that you see people deal with? But I want to make sure I understand also from a cultural perspective, how does big tech kind of go over um, in Holland? How do people consume? How do they feel about it? Um... I think what what we see, and in Holland we have a saying that everything that happens in America, uh, uh, America is ten years before us. To be honest, uh, and I follow America a lot because I have also family there. That it's maybe five year or four years because we are we, we, a lot of Americans who come to Holland. They say. It's a little bit the same, only that cultural thing about that holding small, that's a little bit different. But all the other kind of stuff, uh, if it is Black Lives Matter or racism or, 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 or the algorithms of Facebook, 
the way you think and, and search is a little bit the same. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons that on our website from the beginning, um, the public that visit us is 50-50 United States, 50-50 Europe, uh, because we are uh, more connected to each other and we see more of the same problems. We, we have also obesity tasks, uh, uh, thick people, uh, they are too too heavy uh, because of the food. <laughs> uh, that's not fat shaming; it's just a joke, uh, guys. Uh, but but we have all kind of stuff, and and in the big tech, uh, the the old people, they all use it also. But there is a lot of complaining, especially for Facebook, uh, because of the fake news and and the algorithm. But at the same time, everyone walks into that algorithm with uh, with uh, conspiracy theories, uh, the QAnon. We had it till one of one on four, even one uh, one political party, uh, one on four people in Holland believes that the conspiracy theories that spreading could be true. That's a lot, and in in young people, it's a little bit higher. Because mm. they don't watch the the, the normal the, the 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 mainstream media like we call it here too. You see, I think that I don't know how you listen to this, but maybe it looks a little bit like there uh, back there. Or I'm am I wrong? No, I think so. I think especially as you start to get into some of the um, underbelly, you know, especially with that that group you're talking about, there's sixteen twenty five. You know, they probably consume their media from social media primarily. Right? They're not sitting down watching, you know, BBC or something like this. And so for those who are 16 to 25 in your range, you've talked a lot about what you can provide there. I want to make sure um, we also talk about, um, I guess you can say, what is the, what are, what are the, say if you had to identify a couple or three key challenges that you really help solve in that demographic for people who are listening so if they hear that they say hey i've got to reach out to ricardo uh the first thing i i heard a lot um and, and i'm talking now from the experiences of others is the how do you say it in a nice word i've got the dutch word that i made up uh the, the choice dilemma uh, a lot of people they don't know what to do in life they don't know what they want and um, to help them to see where they are made up for and it could be anything but to help them to see it first so that's that's one of the main challenges and that that makes it easier to choose your study or a job or even in the small things which clothes do i wear do I need to follow the 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 the, 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 the trends or not? Right. Even in the small things, it will help if you know what what your cause is, and also to accept some negative things. Uh, um, and besides that, because that's one of my main tasks, is uh, okay. This is where what your cause is, but how do we make it practical? Because I like practical. I I like also to talk in an abstract way. Yeah, but I like to you get be a lot practical. of ideas. I get that feeling. Uh, uh, and sometimes in, in fairly simple examples that people think, how do you think that? So friends of me say a lot of time, that's a good example. How do you make this? But how do you come up with that? It's crazy. <laughs> like you say, with the dead fish uh, thing. That so, kind yeah, of that was a good. It happens to me all the day. Uh, that's my life. So, so to make it practical for them, okay, but how can you do that now on school? And, and why do this happen to you right now? Then how can you see that in the bigger perspective? Uh, and that it will solve also depression or loneliness. Because if you know, uh, let's, let's take me as an example. When I was seven, I knew already I want to be a speaker, but I stuttered. Uh, and in my stuttering, my mother has some tapes, the old school tapes, where I was uh, speaking in my, my bedroom with my high voice because I had a very high voice when I was younger. Uh, uh, 
like there were millions of people and to inspire them, stuttering, all stuttering. Uh, so I knew fairly young that that that's my calling, and that's my cause. But because I knew that's my cause, I could see the rejections, the hatred from people, from adults who say to my mother, in church, pastors in church. I was playing there. I for, I never forget. I was eight years old. Yeah, that kid need to go away because he need to die because he's dancing in church. And I go to a Pentecostal church. So not even a traditional. So that's for me normal or that, that I was worship leading and that, that, that the church that the pastor says, I don't know why, but all the people, they look at you with, with eyes of hatred, church people. I don't say that, that not church people are, are, can do that, but to give an example, but because of that, I knew the bigger picture, I could set this in, 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 in perspective. And that's what I try to learn that young people, okay, you know now your cause, but if you know you are called for a bigger cause, let's be honest, the power that you need to influence people, it has a price. If you want a big company for the listeners of this podcast, and you want to be an internet, you want to have an international company. And, and I want you to have that, but let's be honest, it has a price and it takes a lot of challenges. It takes a lot of pain. And I don't say don't do it, but if you know for sure that's not my cause, run away and do something else. So you need to be sure to know it's your cause. A lot of people, they want to be influencer, young people. They want to be speakers and all kinds of stuff. But I say, if you, are you not called for that? Do something else. It's, it's a little bit like a few years ago, I, I preached in the church and it was a Pentecostal church with laying on hands. So after the service, a young man, he was, I think he was 19 or something, came to me and said, Ricardo, that, that power that you have, I want a double of it. So I was, first in my head, I was, what a bright, what a bright man is this. But I was thinking, okay, so he said, do you want to lay hands to pray for me to get that? And I was thinking, okay, God, what do I need to say? So I lay my hands and I hear myself saying, give this young man the double of the problems. I, I said, no, I don't want that. But that's the thing. The problems you're facing give, gives you the power that you need for your future cause where you're called for. So that, that's, that's something we need to understand in all those challenges. How big are the problems? How big are the calling? And that doesn't mean that if your calling is small, that you're less worth. Now you have an other position like a body. Your small finger has the same worth as your head, I think, in most cases. I believe everything you said you have experienced, lived, and proved. And specifically from the stories you just told me. I want to make sure that, okay, those who are listen, if you are someone who fits that, reach out to Ricardo. And we're going to touch on how we can get them to contact you and special offerings for the guests. But I always want to make sure that I'm here to work with you as well, right? And so your next 12 months, mm-hmm. what are your goals or visions for your business and impact on the world? Uh, I'm going to keep you accountable when we check in six, 12 months. Yeah, right? that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um my goals for the next 12 months uh, in, in our company and fearless generation is a goal. We are now with 15 people. Uh, we want to go, we want to double our team because uh, we need somebody to, to uh, carry the growth uh, and not only double in, 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 in the people in the, in the members, but also body and character, uh, double in character. Uh, that they will be stronger than they are now because we have very young team members. Uh, one, of, uh, uh, yeah, one of our first team members after the three of us that started. 
two friends of me. She was 17 when she came uh, uh, in the team. She's now 18. She's my precious. Uh, she's a little bit uh, my third sister. So, so, but I want to double them in character so we can catch up the growth. And, and uh, what I also, I always was doubting about it. And it's one of the reasons also that, that I'm in this podcast. That one of my mentors says, you know what it is in Holland? And, and he's a famous presenter in Holland and comedian. In Holland to, to I don't want to be famous, but uh, it will help a lot if you're famous to reach more people. I don't want to be famous, but it's just a vehicle for me. So he said, but if you want to be there, there are two ways to to be famous in Holland and in Europe. One way is be part of the of the of of the people right there to fuck yourself up, literally. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. Maybe I don't know. Maybe in America is a little bit the same. Uh, if you want in in the highest. And it's okay for them if they don't want to do no, this it. This is wrong. I'm just how you really it's feel wrong, that. but that's that's reality. That's wrong, reality. wrong, wrong. Like, not wrong. I'm not passing judgment, but I am hearing the raw truth of how you. Oh, see yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear it. No, that's, okay. uh, that's that's the one way, and the other way is become a little bit more famous outside of Holland, and then in Holland, they think we miss something. And for two years, people say to me, you know what it is with you? You have such big things, but the reason that everywhere you go outside Holland, people want you. But in Holland, it's a little bit hard. And, and they say, go go outside of Holland, bring there your message, begin to inspire. And I, I was just doubting about it. And, and last, last month, I was sitting also with my girlfriend. And I was thinking, you know what? I don't know how, but I wrote my book and I make it not only in Dutch, but in English also. I had contacts in outside Holland. I traveled. I had ways, even though I cannot travel right now because of the building or company uh, directly today, I have also a daughter from six years old. Hey, you know what? I need to reach out to the United States and need to reach out outside of Holland. Also begin there to inspire, not not because of me, but because of the people also right there. And then Holland will follow. Because it's it's a little bit uh for all the listeners, I still have a master degree in theology. Jesus, when he get, came back to the place where he raised in Nazareth. He couldn't do there any miracles, and he said, "A prophet, a prophet, isn't won't be honored and isn't welcome in his own place." And I was thinking, "Yeah, but the Netherlands is my own place. That's the thing. Come on, I need to go outside, and that doesn't mean that we don't do it. I don't do it anything, but that. So in the next year, I want to be more on podcast, TV shows, or traveling outside of Holland and." And do that the same that I do here and, and see how it spread and how people, because that's the most beautiful thing. Is for me, the best result I could have is not money. I love, I love luxury, but it's not money. It's when I see people begin to shine. And that could be in the in the face or in the eyes when I see on stage that you see people catching and begin to shine. I lighting up when people become better than me. If you're listening this on this podcast, my desire is that I get emails and that 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 for three months now or one year's more that I get emails. You know that guy that listened to the podcast and he become better than you. You know what I say? Yes, that's what I want. I love that. Give him two times the energy, right? Give him yeah. boom. Yeah, I want people to go. Be, because that's leadership. That's entrepreneurship is leadership. And a leader is someone who wants to build others better than them. They are not there for you to, for your ego. Oh, it's so nice to feel. No, you're there to serve them. Let's talk about the service you're bringing and the special offer you're bringing yeah. to our guest today. Um, if you want to talk about the amazing books you're on Amazon and the unique off the four, our guest. 
Uh, we have now uh, three uh, also available, but it will be a 16 part series. Uh, yet, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see everything you does. ADHD. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and two years ago, I got my whole book ready after 12 years, but it was a book of 200 pages. And I was thinking, yeah, but most people, young people especially, but also all olders, they don't read so much. In Holland, too, they, they don't, maybe 100 pages maximum. So I was thinking, okay, this is too, too big. But you know what? I can make it in a short series, in a pocket uh, form. So it's very small. You can put it in your pocket. You can put it in your bag when you go to travel. Uh, so I make 16 parts. The first three are now available. And the other one to give for three months from now on uh, when it's live. Uh, get 40% discount on every uh, book that you uh, uh, buy. That uh, means... <laughs> uh, wait, I had the prices. Uh, it's good to... Uh... So first we thought just one book, 40% discount. But even if you got three books, you get 40% discount. Uh, not on the whole price, but on every book. That means that if you take the three, the system of success, that's part one. The root of fear is part two. And the message of the cross is part three. Uh, I, normally it's in dollars, $16.05. And, and it's now then for $9.62. But you need with a discount code, we place it, I guess, in the show notes or something. Is it? Yeah, we're definitely going to make sure we link that yeah. in the show notes. Uh, you need to go then to the website books.fearlessgeneration.nl to order it there because if you order to Amazon directly, we can give you the discount. So you need to order it then uh, 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 to get the discount uh, within the three months. So it's a special offer if you listen to it. Uh, and I know for sure it will help you it's very short, 80 till 90 pages. The first one is 90 pages, but mostly 60, 70 pages of practical stuff and insights to help you to live your dreams, live your calls, live your, uh, your company because that's part of your dream, live your marriage, reach it and stay there in a fearless way, even though the circumstances are bad. Because I don't guarantee that the circumstances will change. But I guarantee that you will change without striving for change. Mm. I guarantee you. So if I remember a coach told me one time, Alex, I don't know if you give your all, you're going to be able to get what you want. But I know for certain that if you don't, you won't. Yeah, true. But but what and and why I say without striving is because most coaches and most help sell. I, I I'm against self help, and I, uh, I all kind of stuff. Why? Because it's uh, in the way most people do it. It set people in a position that you push pressure on yourself to change. The first chapter of my first book is the basic of change, and I say stop with changing yourself. The key to change is stop changing yourself. It's maybe a little bit contradic contradictionary, but, but it's true because when you have a ball and you put it on the water and, and you want to stay to leave it on the water, it could only stay on the water if you put pressure on it. When you relax and don't put pressure on it, what happens? It pops up. So that doesn't work. The thing is, you need to surround yourself with the uh, good people, like the people around you. That's the way you are. You need to got the good knowledge and read it. Listen it a lot because we say earlier in this podcast, what you believe is how you act, is how you, no, how you be, all kinds of stuff. But what you hear is what you're going to believe. So I, say to, I said 
last week to uh, a young girl. She came to us and, and she, she struggled with, with uh, pornography. Yeah. And, and she said, but I don't want that. I, I want to be stay faithful to, to my boyfriend. And, and for me, this is not faithful. I don't say it's bad. Everyone could make their own decision. But for her, it was bad. So I, I say to her, what are the things where you're listening at? Don't try to, don't do it anymore. She, and, and what we, 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 we resolve, I ask her to tell the story, to, to, to be honest. Uh, what, 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 what we discover, we discover that, one, she listens a lot to music, what goes all about a certain type of sexuality. Her girlfriend, a little bit, uh, you could say when you're younger, you say the sluts of the schools. This kind of stuff. And I say, I don't say that you don't hang around with them, but maybe you could try to find also new friends. Maybe you could try to listen to other music. And I don't say in one, in one day, but if you keep doing that, it will change you. The messages that changed my life, I listen to them still on my phone. Maybe 10,000 times, maybe more. <laughs> and I listen over and over again, even though I know the words. When I fall asleep. And it changed my mind. It changed my thinking. I, it changed my thinking from I'm not good enough. That was my core, core thought, core belief when I grew up, to I'm so self-confident, it's ridiculous. I walk by glasses, to blah, by mirrors, and I see myself thinking, you're looking so hot. You're looking so sexy. I never imagined that I could say that to myself. But that's because I listen. I listen to the right things. I, I surround myself with the right people. And I become like them. So that, that's why I say I guarantee that you will change without striving. And maybe you need to read the book three times over again. Do that. Man, if that's a, a message to finish on, that's a strong one because I think this whole conversation has not just been your life and your experience, but the reasons that you saw things happen. Because obviously yeah. you're a very deep thinker. You think not just what happened, but why. You know, yeah, too. how can I take this to someone else and how can they be more re mm. replicable in a better way? And so, Ricardo, I want to thank you for coming on the show today and sharing your honest, authentic experience with the audience. And as we wrap up here, I want to give you the last word, one piece of advice that you might want to share with those who listen as the final takeaway. Uh, first, you're welcome. It was an honor. <laughs> uh, one advice. I need to pick one. I see someone laughing at the couch right there. My girlfriend. Uh, because I said one advice. <laughs> um, yeah, one advice. What's the best advice? I think, yeah, when I say last, I think that's the best advice. Stop trying to change yourself who you are right now is good enough not what you're doing who you are and begin wow, to stop see that trying to that. change yourself it's not who you are it's what you're doing nay yeah no in the other way who you are is good enough and what you're yeah. doing doesn't matter uh because stop putting pressure on what you're doing and what your result is yeah, what yeah. your and be who you are and try not not try that's not a good word start uh, enjoying yourself when you do nothing and i know for entrepreneurs this is hard stuff do nothing when you're just watching netflix do that nonsense theory at the end yeah. of the day just say to yourself i'm proud of myself and on a certain way, you're going to feel it. And that's, that's the moment that your character begins to grow in a way that you are beginning to be ready for where you're made of. Unless you reach that, that point, you are not ready to be that big entrepreneur that, that you're calling to be. Because all the negative things will blow you away. 
Well, Ricardo, I want to thank you so much for being open and authentic with us today. This You're has welcome. been another episode of the Startup Secret Show. Go grab his book. And until next time. Yes. <laughs>